-hmm. Okay. All right. In Premiere, peoples, let's make a new project. So go to the new project button. Uh, the name of this file, don't hit OK, don't jump ahead too fast. Okay, the name is going to be Poolside Edit 01. Each week when we do this, we're doing a new version of it. So if we screw up on Edit 3, we at least can fall back to Edit 2 and know everything was clean up to that point. So this is helpful. Where you are going to put it, I would browse to wherever you have, you can put this on your desktop, on your jump drive, or you can put it in the folder of the book files that I gave you. Um, so I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to go in this multimedia folder that I had you download. I'm going to go into lessons. And I'm going to go into lesson 03. This is chapter three in this book. So I'm going to save this new project in the lesson three folder. Wherever you save it is fine by me. Just know where you're putting it. So the name of it is Poolside Edit 01, and it's going in my Lesson 3 folder. The rest of this we saw in earlier lessons um, is set up to the defaults, and it's good. So you can push OK. <clears throat> Make sure before we move on, we're going to go in the editing workspace, which is the one that has the source monitor, the program monitor at the top, your project panel on the left, your tools, and then the timeline. Um, if you want to make your timeline a little taller and your source and program monitor areas a little thinner, you just drag that rule to kind of reshape things here. All right. Down in the project panel, lower left, there are no files in this project now. Um, just because they're in the project panel doesn't mean we're using them, but they're ready to be used. So we're going to go get them by using the media browser, which is the second tab. That's kind of like a mini bridge put right in here. So in here, in the media browser, we are going to navigate to wherever you put these files. Um, so for me, I'm going to go to the hard drive. I'm going to go to users, my identity, BRBL, and eventually I'm going to find the desktop. And that is where my multimedia 2016 folder is located. Yep. No, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, because I'm the wrong person. Yeah, so where you need to navigate to get to that is probably the hard drive. And then from there, find users. And then your identity usually has a little home because you're logged in. And then desktop, presumably, if you put it on your desktop. Multimedia 2016. Do you guys want me to share my screen? You've got in the back? Yeah. Yep. There, which, again, is like Bridge. We have it drilled down to the point that we can see this folder and we can see the options that are inside of that. Um, you can see a list view, like I have right here, or at the bottom of this window, you could click on the thumbnail version. And then you could see actual thumbnails if you drilled into these folders. Um, I'm going to stay in the list view. Um, a little bit easier. <clears throat> All right. We are going to import single clips or entire folders of clips into our project in this next step. So we're going to import the entire contents of the footage folder. So we have a folder called footage. <clears throat> um, let's twirl it open, double click it to twirl it open, and then we're going to select just single click one of them and then command A. So that's going to select everything in this folder, including loose items and some folders. That R3D folder and the interview folder are all selected. And then we're going to simply right click. Okay, come on, Mr. Mouse. Yeah, is it disabled? Not that I knew of. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay, so to make sure that all of your clips are deselected and not just maybe one of them is, we're going to deselect all, which is Command Shift A. So make sure that you've done that and no clips are highlighted. 
Um, in our project panel, we're going to go down and we're going to find that clip called Prod Sweeping Confetti 60 frames per second dot M4V. So at the very bottom, that fast one or the one with 60 frames per second. Once we have it highlighted, we're going to um, either go up to the menu at the top and choose something or we can right click. If you go to the menu at the top, you're going to choose Clip Modify. If you right click, you just need to go to the word Modify and then Interpret Footage. So right click, Modify, Interpret Footage. And in this window, we've seen this before, um, use the frame rate from the file is the first option or assume this frame rate and we had typed in one frame per second last time we used it but we're going to change that so we're going to say um, assume this frame rate that's the one that we want to click yep got an issue Logan or no you have what mm-hmm Okay, I'll come back in just a second. Let's just finish this for everybody else. So we've assumed the frame rate and we're going to type in 23.976. That's what the rest of them are. And then say, okay. If you're in this big window, hit the tilde key to go back to normal. And then let's just um, double click on this file, which will open it in the source window and we're going to verify that it's playing slow. So in the source window, if you push the space bar, that plays, and we can see that it is playing in slow motion. So we went from 60 frames per second basically down to 30 frames per second. All right, so we have that slow motion video. That's all good. I'm going to pause that. All right, back in your project folder, we have a mess. Right now we have two bins. We have an interview bin and an R3D bin. Um, we want to clean this up because what we see is a whole bunch of loose files. Notice that they name them very strategically. We have pre, meaning pre-shooting. We have prod, which is the actual production. And then we have setup, so when they were setting up things. So they named their clips very strategically so that a lot of people working on this would understand what they are. So if you're going to name your clips when you upload them to a Google Drive that you guys are sharing, think of a good naming system. And then they kind of tell what's going on in the clip and who's in the clip. So production, shooting, Jeff, Philip, dancer. It's pretty clear what's in that clip, and it's a helpful way of organizing. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import an entire folder or bin from something that we already have, which is a folder called audio. So we need to go back to our media browser tab. And in that, you probably need to go up a step so that you get back to these four different folders that we brought in on the jump drive. And we find a folder called audio. You're gonna click just once to select it. And then we're gonna go up to the file menu and we're gonna say import from media browser. So we're gonna import the whole thing. So file, import from media browser. Now we look back at our project panel, which it jumped back to, and we see a bin called audio. If we twirl it open, it's got three um, sound files. All right, you can twirl that shut so that we don't have to see all of them. Messaging messages on the screen that I want to read. Okay. Anybody else having a slow time of recording? Audio went pretty quickly. Every, everything else went quick. This, this camera. Lesson four start. You're, I don't know what you're importing. Uh, audio. That's not what this says, though. Quick cancel. Single click audio. Did not do that last time. You pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Must have is right. Okay. Everybody good? We all have that media, the audio file. 
Ben? Okay. We're going to make a new bin from scratch. We've done this before. Down at the bottom of the project panel in the lower right, you have the three icons. The one that looks like a folder or a bin is new bin. So click on that. And it's going to give us a chance to name it right away. And we're going to name it B-Roll. So B-Roll footage is the extra behind the scenes shot. So when we were watching the finished video, the interview shots are the ones that are on track one. That's what we're seeing them sitting down and talking. But the B-roll is when we cut away and we actually see scenes from during the day or weeks or months before. So B-roll sometimes doesn't have audio. These are all just video clips with no sound at all. But B-roll can be anything. It's your extra footage that's going to help tell the story. All right. In here, we're going to put all the clips that are pre-production, setup, and post-production. So they all have that prefix of pre, post, or setup. So scroll down until we can see more of these clips. Again, if you want to make this um, window bigger with the tilde key, that's probably not the worst idea. So we're going to take the pre and we're going to hold down or we're going to hold shift and hold down on the last pre. That's going to select all of the pre clips. And we're going to drag them into the B-roll bin until it lights up and then let go. And that moves them into that bin and you can see that they're pushed over. That kind of shows you that they're inside of that bin now. Another way that we can do this, if we scroll down to where all the rest of them are, instead of highlighting them, we can do a marquee select. So we can start down at the bottom and shift and drag a marquee. And we're going to take all of the other clips that are prod or set up, highlight them, and I'm going to twirl shut B-roll so I have more room on my screen, and I'm going to click and drag those into the B-roll bin as well. Pardon? Yeah, so all of, the, all of those clips that were loose before, they're either pre, prod, or setup as the prefix. All of those get dragged into the B-roll bin. And then when you're done and you twirl it shut, it should look like this. It's clean, it's just four bins. We have audio, B-roll, interview, and red. Red is that R3D high resolution video that's shot at a higher rate. All right, everybody at this point? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the B-roll, the interview, and the R3D bins, and we're going to put all three of those into one bin, so it's going to be even better organized. So we're going to marquee select, and it works best if you start in an empty area. Marquee select those three, so B-roll, interview, and R3D. And then drag those down into the new bin icon at the bottom right and let go. That's going to nest those inside of a new bin and give you a chance to name it and we're going to name this footage. So all of the footage we have falls into three categories. B-roll, interview, R3D, and they're all inside of the footage bin now. So if we twirl that shut we just have two bins. Audio, and footage. Everyone good? Okay, the next part of this is, um, especially when you're given all the videos like we are here, you didn't shoot them, you don't know the backstory, you don't know what all they shot, a good practice is you're going to have to go and watch these and see what they say, what they do, what are good clips, what are stupid clips, things like that. So you want to get familiar with these clips and notice where there might be problems or good things. The B-roll clips, like I mentioned, have no sound. You still have to watch them to see what's going on, but there isn't going to be sound. Um, the R3D bin is the high def stuff, so that's other stuff you're going to have to watch. So in the project panel, we can double click on the interview bin, and that's going to open it in the project panel. And then double click on interview Adam 1. And I'm going to play this one 
So you hear my sound only, and then we'll go from there. Perfect. So tomorrow we begin. So you can see that all that stuff at the beginning is, you know, will be cut out, right? Mm -hmm. All that jibber jabber. Right early, we're going to be walking into the studio right at 8 o'clock in the morning and setting everything up. We're going to hustle as quickly as we can. We've got a short window of time, and uh, we're lucky to work with Matt Rome from Rome Company, who will be providing a great lighting package along with uh, some of his best lighting assistants, gaffers, and grips. And we're going to build the set as quickly as we can, which means getting all that light going on, getting all the you know fog and the mood happening. And the process of turning on all of that is going to be part of the filming, too. Okay. So if you remember when I showed you the finished product, product, there's a couple of clips in there that are used, not all of it, but you might have heard some things. So what I want you to do on your own with your phones is become familiar with all of these interview clips. So double click them to open them in the source window and play them and listen to it and kind of pay attention to what's going on in here so that you're familiar with all these pieces. So go ahead and do that in the next few minutes. And when you're done, I will notice and we'll move on. So for now, all of the interview, listen to all of them. So tomorrow we begin. We'll... Headphones, people. Listen to interview Jeff. This one? No, Jeff. This is such a weirdo. I don't know. Do you guys have headphones? Daytime disco. I gotta listen. I'm laughing at Jeff's interview. Yeah, yeah, I know they're weird. We make daytime disco. <laughs> the silence is this one is so funny. Yeah. Uh -oh. Are we supposed to label these or anything? Nope, they're already named yeah. pretty descriptively, and you need to leave those names. But you, I want you to just hear what they're saying and get an idea for what could be used and what's obviously got to be edited out and some sound bites that are good. Kind of just becoming familiar with this is the bottom. You got sound because I can see it over. I mean, yeah, but I'm not hearing. You're not hearing it. Oh, now I do. Got it. This guy's not on the 
Did you want to speak yet? Nope. 100%. <laughs> His face is so funny. Yes, yes, yeah. This is a real band. Yeah, it's a real band. Out of LA. Oh, I It's not exactly like I'm doing. Thank you. 